Hey everybody, welcome to this performance-based question for your A plus 1201 examination. In this question, our goal is going to be to fill out this diagram with the correct protocol and the correct port number for each of the following tasks that these individuals need to complete. We will be given a written set of requirements that Bob and Christina and James and Sarah all need to complete in relation to either sending something to each other, controlling the desktop of one another, interacting with these servers that we have in the middle here. And it's going to be our job to say what protocol we need to advise them to use and what port that protocol is going to operate on. And here's the kicker. For this one today, we actually don't have any multiple choice options to choose from. We are going to have to type our answers in. So I am going to walk you through this step by step. And this one is really going to test you because often you'll have multiple choice answers to choose from. But in this one today, you're not going to have that, which means you're going to have to really make sure you have your understanding uh, there 100%. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and get started. First page of instructions that we have says, fill out the diagram with the correct ports and protocols. All right, if we move to the next one, we are given a written description. Let's have a read through this together. It reads, Bob would like to send Christina a file containing details on how to care for his cat as she is house sitting for him over the upcoming holidays. To do this, Bob asks James to assist him by giving James control of his desktop. While Christina waits, she sends a request to discover the IP address of the website, howtocareforcats.com. While all of this is occurring, Sarah searches the internet for information on how to pass her A plus exam. She has set an outbound rule blocking port 80 in order to allow for secure internet browsing. However, she has accidentally misconfigured her inbound rules, setting a deny all with an allow rule for an insecure web for insecure web browsing. Sorry. So that's a lot. We have to take that those written requirements and figure out what ports and protocols each of these individuals are going to use. And you may very well get a question like this on your exam. Now look, there's a lot going on here. One of the biggest skills you're going to need for your exam is the ability to break down large chunks of requirements and information into simple little segments that you can tackle one part at a time. So let's just go through this one bit at a time. Bob would like to send Christina a file containing details on how to care for his cat as she is house sitting for him over the upcoming holidays. Let's just focus on that one now. Bob would like to send Christina a file containing details on how to care for his cat. So Bob is sending Christina a file. Let's use the green one for our uh, protocol. What protocol do we use to send a file? You're going to need to remember what it is and be able to type it out. Have a guess. If you're not sure, you might want to go and have a look at your resources. If you have my learning guide, go and have a look, but type something in there. What protocol would we use? We would use FTP and the, the port that it operates on, we know FTP actually operates over two ports. It's 20 and 21. Port 20 is used for sending data and 21 is used for control commands. So the correct answer here would be Bob in order to send a file is using the protocol FTP over port 20 to send that to Christina over here. You can see if we start to break this down, it's not too intimidating. Let's go to the next one. To do this, Bob asks James to assist him by giving James control of his desktop. Okay, so Bob has asked James to assist him by giving him control of his desktop. So here's Bob, uh, James is over here. So we need to figure out what protocol is James going to use here to give, uh, to take control of Bob's desktop. Green is for our protocols. Do you remember what protocol do you use to take control of someone's desktop? It's going to be R D. P, remote Desktop Protocol is the one. Remote Desktop Protocol allows you to take control of someone else's desktop from a distance. So you can actually have them use your computer, move your mouse around and click, right? That is using the protocol Remote Desktop 
protocol. Now, I'm not going too deep into all of this because I have gone super deep into this with my actual full free course here on my YouTube channel. Now we just need to know what port does that operate on? Remote desktop protocol operates on port. Do you know? Do you remember? I always feel like Dora the Explorer when I do this because I'm talking to myself right now. It is 3213389. Remote desktop protocol operates on port 3389. All right, so let's go to the next sentence that we need to try to decipher. Hey guys, this video is sponsored by the A Plus Core 1 and Core 2 Ultimate Learning Guide. This learning guide has helped many people pass their Core 1 and Core 2 exams, meaning that they can move on to their Network Plus and Security Plus sooner rather than later. In the learning guide, here's what you will get. Detailed notes, revision notes, active recall questions, and multiple choice questions for every single exam objective. Three full-length practice exams with performance-based questions. A document with performance-based questions questions, a video showing you exactly how to study using multiple choice questions so you will be moving ahead of 99% of other people at a much faster rate because you are studying more effectively, a video giving you test taking tips in case you get stuck on a question in the exam, a video showing you how to use free AI tools to 10 times your study sessions, and best of all, I want this to be accessible to everyone regardless of your economic position, so I've made it extremely affordable. So if this sounds good to you, you can head over to journeytocyber.com and grab your a plus core one or core two learning guide today while christina waits she sends a request to discover the ip address of the website howtocareforcats.com okay christina is discovering the ip address hmm so she's going to have to send a request to a server we have three servers here we have a web server a name resolution server and a mail server it's kind of done for us here because the arrow has been drawn. So we know this name resolution server is the one that she is sending the request to. If you were to have a question in an exam, there's a good possibility you might have to select which of these types of servers that she would actually have to make that request to. But in this case, it's been done for us. The name resolution server, otherwise known as the DNS server, all right? The DNS, name resolution server. This is the server that translates IP addresses to human readable URL addresses and human readable URL addresses to IP addresses. So what protocol are we using here? This one's a little bit easier. The protocol is simply DNS. Hopefully we got that one. And now we need to remember what port DNS operates on. DNS operates on port. Pause the video if you have to. Have a go at it if you haven't already. It operates on port 53. DNS is on port 53. Anytime you are making a request to find out what is the IP address of a website or what is the name of a URL address for a particular IP address, if you're translating between those two, you're using the DNS protocol, which operates on port 53. We're now down to the second paragraph here where it says, while all of this is occurring, Sarah searches the internet for information on how to pass her a exam. She has set an outbound rule blocking port 80 in order to allow for secure internet browsing. Okay, this is where it starts to get a little bit more tricky, right? We know she's searching the internet. So if we come back here and we find Sarah, she's searching the internet. So she is sending a request to the web server. When you, when you search, when you put in that request into the address bar and you press enter, you are using a protocol and over report to go out. In other words, that is called an outbound rule. The data is leaving your device, your network and going out to the server, an outbound rule. So the sentence here specifies, she has set an outbound rule blocking port 80 in order to allow for secure internet browsing. So if we remember, there are two primary protocols for internet browsing. We have port 80, which is insecure internet browsing or HTTP. So if we only wanted to allow for secure internet browsing, we could block port 80 or set an outbound rule to deny port 80, which would therefore leave the secure protocol and port for internet browsing as the only available option, therefore mandating secure internet browsing. So there's a two protocols and two ports that we need to know for internet browsing. There's HTTP, which operates on port 80, 
but as an outbound rule, that has been blocked. So what is the other protocol and what port does that operate on for secure internet browsing? Do we remember? It is HTTPS. That is going to be the protocol and it operates on port 443, okay? 443. So that is our answer for that one. Now, the last component here says she has accidentally misconfigured her inbound rules. So the inbound rule would be data coming in to her network, into her device. So this arrow here is the inbound rule. Setting a deny all with an allow rule for insecure web browsing. All right, so she has set a deny all with an allow rule for insecure web browsing. So if you set a deny all rule on your firewall, you're denying everything else. But if you set an allow rule, you're making an exception. So the only exception for the protocol and port to operate as an inbound rule is insecure web browsing. And we talked about what that was before. That is the alternative. That is the one that is insecure. So that is HTTP and that is coming over port 80. Now we've gone through all of this text here, right? We've finished our instructions, but we do have one more here. We still have James who is sending something. Something is going outbound to the mail server. With no written instructions, we need to try to work out what port and protocol is he using for this? Let's think this through. Even without written instructions, we should be able to figure this out. If you are sending mail, there is only one protocol and port you need to know that relates to sending mail. There's two for receiving. For receiving, we have POP3 and we have IMAP, but for sending, there is only one. James is sending to the mail server, so he would be operating or, or he would be using the protocol. Do you want to have a guess quickly? Your answer is going to come in three, two, one, he would be using simple mail transfer protocol. SMTP is the only one that sends mail. Now, what port does that operate on? SMTP operates on port, can you remember? It's on port 25, guys. So, what we have done in this performance-based question is we have gone through written requirements on one slide. We've then had to remember what those requirements are, really focus on one at a time, come through to the next slide and talk about what protocol and what port those operate on. On your actual exam, guys, it may be the case that you have to type something in. It may very well, well be the case that you actually do not have access to multiple choice questions for your performance-based questions. You may have access to some options to choose from and you also may not. So you have to be prepared for the scenario in which you do not have options to choose from for your multiple choice questions, which is why it's really important to have a good overall understanding of uh, everything before you go in. Don't rely on multiple choice options to get you through the answers. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one, guys. If you did want to get a hold of my learning guide that was talked about in the sponsored section of this video, you can go ahead and click on the link in the description or in the pinned comment below and you, you can get that there. Otherwise, guys, I'm going to keep putting out these free videos and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.